So here we go then. Our journey with Scuderia Toro Rosso begins. Firstly, time to sign our new contract for the 2017 season. We'll be the number two driver to begin with, but I'll be hoping to change that pretty damn soon. And we waste no time getting into the Australian Grand Prix and heading towards practice and kicking off our full-time F1 2017 career mode. Guys, it is good to be here. We're getting straight into the practice programs. Obviously, the R&D tree and resource points even more important this year than from last year's game. Obviously, with the really just vast difference in the actual tree itself. There's so many more upgrades to do, so you need so many more points in, you know, after talking to all the developers, uh, you know, in the development, it's going to be so much harder now to actually develop the car, and it's not going to be as straightforward and fast as it was in last year's game. So, Tackling the practice programs for me this year is going to be very much about all about efficiency. I talked about in some of the preview videos how now, thankfully, if you absolutely smash the target and the point score on the first lap, you can pretty much complete the practice program. You'll see here we're doing at the moment the tire wear test and we actually do, uh, do really well through the final few corners going from green to purple, well into the purple. And so as we cross the line, you'll see just bang straight in. That is done. That's the test done for us. So, you know, if you can be th that efficient with it, you don't actually need to spend too much time actually doing the practice programs if you don't want to. I mean, obviously, if you're a more casual player, you want to get used to the circuit and the car and whatnot. And if you don't really know much about the setup, uh, the actual setup menu itself and how to set up the car properly, you're going to want to do more laps. But if you are not, I know there are plenty of you that aren't and you just want to get through it and you want to, you know, earn the points, but not waste too much time, obviously, because, you know, everyone's busy in life. Uh, you know, if you just go efficiently about it and go as, uh, as good as you can, just again, once again, with the actual t uh, fuel saving, just smashing that straight away after one lap. And a little note on the fuel saving, because I know maybe that's going to be something that comes up in terms of maybe how to effectively do that. I found that lifting and coasting on the fuel saving program wasn't actually that useful compared to actually just shifting up. up Upshifting early and just short shifting was a lot more useful than actually lifting and coasting. Because if you li lift and coast too much, you're not going to get the delta time you need to actually complete the lap and have it valid for the test so i recommend just up shifting and not really lifting coasting too much maybe a little bit towards the end of the lap if you can see you've got enough delta time there but anyway now we move on to the race strategy this is an fp2 actually i decided to leave the race strategy and the qualifying strategy kind of practice programs till fp2 when the kind of sun was getting a little bit lower because of course this will be the race conditions and the qualifying conditions for saturday and sunday so i thought it'd be better to kind of do it then so you can see uh, we finished the race program and uh, right at the right time because Vettel was literally just overtaking us as we cross the line for that third lap to get all the data and get the max points and then we do the qualifying program and this one was crucial for me to do the qualifying program in this kind of setting of the, the sun going down because I mentioned it in the preview video I did on the weekend but I, I always hate the kind of view you get of the breaking zones when the sun's coming down it's so so hard to see but you can see we get a perfect score and we've completed all the programs there didn't get every single one because there are a few little objectives here and there that we didn't get but all the actual official programs we did and then obviously it's time to go back to our motorhome the brand new motorhome kind of area from the 2017 game meet our engineer obviously he's going to mention and talk to us about the R&D tree we're going to get uh, introduced to the resource points for the very first time and we're going to add on all the resource points we just earned on top of a lump sum that we get given at the very start of this game. It's not too much actually, it's, it, it's not that much in reality because if you think about it, most of the big kind of upgrades are going to initially cost 1,000 points and then as you get further on they're going to cost even more. I think there's a couple that may even cost 2,000, 2,500 when you get right to the end of the branches of the R&D tree. So we don't actually have too much to play with. Obviously at the moment though we're a bit of an unknown where we really are in the pecking order even though it does say on the performance chart you can never fully believe that sometimes and the on-track form will obviously tell us so after the Australian Grand Prix is when I'm going to be looking to do my first upgrade so for now we'll just leave leave it as it is we're not going to spend any points on the R&D tree uh, we're going to get straight into the qualifying our very first one with Tara so let's get into Welcome it. Welcome to Melbourne where qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly. Many of the drivers have commented on the challenge posed by the high-speed direction changes around this circuit, but you still need to be quick in a straight line. Is that a fair layman's appraisal? Drivers are going to need a nicely balanced car to be fast here. They'll need to get the most out of the medium and high-speed corners, which will push them to run more downforce. But in turn, this slows the car down on the straights. It's a tricky balancing act.
Right, so before heading into our first flying lap here on the Ultra Softs, we're going to just uh, change this up a little bit and tweak a few things from practice. Didn't do too much uh, setup changes in practice, not going to lie, but, you know, because I found I found it pretty comfortable straight away from the get-go. This year, you'll find the default setup is a pretty damn good bog-standard setup. Obviously, you can find time and you can find comfort, and that definitely will be the case and was the case here for me as well, um, but that's also personal preference. But I know a lot of you guys have already asked in the preview uh, videos about doing setup videos like I did for the last year's game just like last year it's the same way i'm going to do it basically once i've done an entire career mode season in this tile or so i will then do one big video where i show you every single setup i've used in the career mode because at the moment obviously i'm still sussing things out uh, and obviously i haven't driven every single circuit i'll do that as i go through the career mode um so that's just the best way in my opinion to do it so once we've done one entire season i'll bring that video out eventually obviously here just looking at the engine management and gearbox obviously there's nothing to change yet on the engine part or the gearbox if you don't know, if you're new to the F1 game at, at completely at this point of the video and my channel, obviously engine management and gearbox management is now a thing in the game, but obviously there's nothing right now to change. So we're going on to our flying lap, our first flying lap, and actually look at it, look, look at the screen, it's bloody overcast, so actually all that kind of faff about doing the, the qualifying run in FP2 really didn't mean too much in the end because it's overcast in qualifying, so I can actually see where I'm going at the moment, so we're on our first flying lap here and our first lap in anger in the Toro Rosso. At the moment, you can see we've got Verstappen taking the fast side of the Grand Prix. Obviously, the Ferrari and Mercedes cars yet to set a lap time, although there you go, Hamilton. But so far, so good in the first sector. Flat out through that right-hander there now on this year's game, the 2017 Aero. Just uh, spot the braking zone. Fourth gear this time compared to third from last year, I found there. Just kind of let the car roll through. But so far, pretty decent, okay. I think maybe I could have been a bit more aggressive into some of the first few turns, but then this one, a little bit tricky. Uh, went down to third, slid the car a little bit, and then get as close as you can to the wall on the right-hand side on the exit. Then you move to the left, and then slowly move to the right for the braking zone. Down one gear to seven, just lift off a tad to get the car turned in. Obviously, if you're in the Ferrari or Mercedes or Red Bull car, that may even be near enough flat there in seventh gear. But in the Toro, I have to lift off a little bit. Then you're going to drop down to fourth, maybe even third, if you're feeling a little bit daring, want to rev out the, the engine a little bit. And then here, midway through the corner, I go down to fifth gear just to get more revs on the exit. And then nice and easy. I went down probably one, two, uh, one gear too many there to second. You could probably keep it in third. Let the car just ease the power in in fifth gear. And we're going to go across the line. We're going to see what our first line lap is going to be. It's P7 at the moment. Obviously, there's going to be plenty of people yet to set lap times. And you can see actually immediately Ocon's already set a fast lap than me. And we're down to P8. And uh, Vettel just goes ahead there. I'm pretty sure I didn't hold him up there, but... We now go and change for a second set of Ultra Soft tires. We've got three available. The race, we've also got one set of fresh Ultra Softs and uh, Super Softs uh, saved for the race. So we can't use them in qualifying. But we have three sets here of the Purple Ultras and one set of the Super Softs. If you did want to feel a bit daring there, maybe in a higher car, possibly. And also, if you were doing all three qualifying sessions, obviously, at the moment, you can tell we're doing the short qualifying only to keep it nice, short and snappy. Because I want to get ahead into the actual racing action rather than just faffing around with so much qualifying in the videos here in the career mode. You can see. I got really held up into turn one with the Williams car initially into turn two. And then we're actually closing up on Danny Ricciardo. And as we come through to the end of sector one, he slows down massively here. And I get put off straight away. Go a little bit wide there. And straight away, I just abandoned this lap pretty much. I actually wanted to maybe slow down, let the Williams car through and maybe go again because there's enough there's enough tire life. But then uh, your stroll just kind of just didn't pass me. So I just gave up with that. And unfortunately, because we didn't get a second run in, I really felt I could have gone faster on the second run because that first run was a, a very kind of timid, kind of nervous first lap in the Toro Rosso in anger. And we've only come in 15th place. We've outqualified our teammate, Carlos Sainz. So it's good good that we've outqualified our teammate. And obviously, you've got to say, being right next to him, we've not done a too bad of a job to be on pace with where the car seems to be compared to two Sainz. But I think definitely think we could have broken into towards the top 10 just outside it but still it's the first it's the first quality session of the year so can't be too disheartened and let's just get straight into the race day of course not simply the start of a new season but the start of a new kind of formula one anthony davidson great to have you with us once again this is a big moment for the sport big changes to the technical regulations the potential perhaps to give us the biggest shake-up since 2014 very different cars visually and, fingers crossed, much faster as well. Good thing then that combined these teams put in just a shade over 13,000 kilometers on the clock during testing. The cornering speed of these new machines is absolutely unbelievable. How many lap records are still held by Michael Schumacher from 2004? 
Well, on the right day, on the right tyres, we might just be threatening them this year. Wider tyres, wider cars, more downforce. I have to say they look great, and the qualifying spectacle is undebatable. Now the big question remains, can they follow? Can they race? Or have these new rules gone too far? We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. And Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Raikkonen, Hamilton, Daniel Ricciardo, and Verstappen, Massa, Stroll, Grosjean, and Sergio Perez, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Esteban Ocon, and Palmer, a Toro Rosso, Sainz, Fernando Alonso, and Pascal Wehrlein, Ericsson, and Stoffel van Dorn completes the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Right, so here we are for our first race in the Toro Rosso car, the Australian Grand Prix. We're looking at the race strategy. It's going to look like a pretty standard one-stop from where we are on the grid. Obviously, we can choose whatever compound we want to start on. And at the moment, my engineers are saying default super soft tyres and then a set of soft tyres. So completely even just ignoring the ultra softs, which uh, most of the top 10 obviously qualified on and we, qual we tried to qualify on. It looks like we're probably just going to end up going for that one-stop. I don't think we're necessarily going to have the pace to make a two-stop work. A two-stop will probably be for the likes of the two Ferrari cars, the two Mercedes, even the two Red Bulls. Um, but uh, for us in the Toro Rosso, starting from P15 as well, I think we'll be better off just trying to get ahead, maybe some clean air, and then maybe trying to hold up some cars if we can potentially, um, and just avoiding the ultra softs because they really won't go that long, only like a couple of eight laps, whereas we need to get quite some way into the Grand Prix. But let's go, and let's do this thing as we go to five red lights to the Australian Grand Prix. Round number one of our F1 2017 career mode is a go, and it's a poor getaway from us changing up to third gear a little bit too early as Carlos Sainz able to overtake us already before we even get to turn one trying to suss out a place to go maybe down the inside it's going to be very very tight into turn one three wide there for the two Renault cars and one of the Haas cars I think of Kevin Magnussen is now we're stuck behind Carlos Sainz trying to get this slipstream and can we maybe try and make a little bit of a dive and move down the ins in this inside very opportunistic place to make a move we're also going to go down the inside of Esteban Ocon but as much as we try and hang it around the outside of this next left hander Ocon has it there as they go side by side up ahead uh, Hulkenberg and Kevin Magnussen, I think, as Palmer just watches uh, from behind. But maybe can we try and make a move now on Ocon as he's caught napping a little bit behind Palmer. We'll go side by side. He's still there on my inside there. The red proximity arrow shows that. And as we swoop through on this nice panning shot, you can see still have to make it work. And now eventually we do get ahead and we've overtaken Ocon. So now we can try and get on the back of Jolly and Palmer in the other Renault car. So we're up into P14. So one place higher than what we qualified in. So initially had to try and re-overtake our teammate, obviously. So now we can settle down to business and maybe try try and get to work on one of the Renault cars here. Palmer held up a little bit by Magnussen. So we have to brake check ourselves a little bit and go a bit slower than I wanted to through that final, uh, second last corner. Now through the final corner, really getting a lot on Palmer. You can see him right up his gearbox. We have to go up into Rich Mix. And obviously with the 2017 cars, it really is a tough time now with the slipstream and the dirty air. Really have to go for it. Really make a diving move down the inside of Palmer and really make sure we outbreak him there. Otherwise, it is going to be a difficult time really. Especially the AI this year definitely are a lot more aggressive. They will defend their position if uh, if you don't give them a hard enough time of it. And so you can see Palmer actually tries to come back at us. We do defend quite well and just make sure we take the natural racing line and now he'll be susceptible to uh, what will be Sergio Perez and then our teammate Carlos Sainz who finds himself behind, uh, stuck behind Perez pretty much. And now we're closing up on Kevin Magnussen as we go on to the end of lap two. Yellow flags though behind us. So I wonder if there's a car already out. It is going to be Marcus Ericsson out of this Grand Prix. So we've already got 19 runners in this Grand Prix. It's only been two laps gone. So uh, that was a very early retirement in there. I'm not too sure there's any contact made or a mechanical failure, but as Lewis Hamilton set the fast up the Grand Prix, we're going to try and maybe think about making a move on Magnussen. Didn't have enough closing speed into turn one there. You know, if that was 2016, I would have made the pop, but just didn't have enough overspeed to make it work. Now we do, though, and we're going to go down the inside, and now this time, can we do what we couldn't do to Ocon? And yes, we can, as we actually go and squeeze Magnussen out into the entry of that corner. Don't even have to hassle with him on the exit, and now we can get on the back of Nico Hulkenberg. We're up into P12 now, so making some really, really Really decent progress and this Toro Rosso is feeling pretty damn nippy on the super softs obviously all these guys are on soft tires Hulkenberg what is ahead of us Magnussen is, was behind us so at the moment obviously you would think that I would be faster on this set of tires and so basically that's why I need to kind of get a move on really if I get held up by these guys 
basically that's my strategy ruined and wrecked because they're going to hold me up. They're going longer than I am into this Grand Prix. And you can see there, Hulkenberg did slam the door shut on me on the end of that back straight to that right-hander. So we have to wait until the final corner. Opening DRS, rich mix as well. And we're going to get the slipstream. We're going to move to the right-hand side of the circuit to get it down the inside of the German. And I think we should have this into the break. So no, Nico does try and hang it around the outside. Doesn't work out. We do squeeze him into the mid part of the corner, into the apex. And we're up into P11 now. So the next person up ahead is going to be Sergio Perez. So actually, my bad. That was Ocon the entire time. I was trying to talk about the who's behind me, obviously, uh, previously on the commentary. But now we move on to lap five. We are trying to chase down Perez. He finds himself stuck behind two cars. There, yellow flags, though. And oh, on the left-hand side. Oh, oh, my God. There's a Mercedes and a Ferrari out. There's only 18 runners left in this. I think that was uh, must have been one of the front runners. I don't, I'm not too sure if it was Bottas or Vettel or Raikkonen or Hamilton. But there definitely was a Mercedes, the turquoise silver car of a Mercedes. And definitely what looked like the Ferrari, one of the Ferrari cars stricken on the left hand side there so calamities for the race leaders it's going to be Sebastian Vettel out of the Australian Grand Prix so it's just Kimi Raikkonen left in this Grand Prix to fend for Ferrari so really big disaster there for Seb in his opening race for this season and now it's all been very chaotic because now you can see there it's a, I think that's a Red Bull car yes it is as we tap the back of Perez as uh, Perez kind of gets brake checked by Ricardo into turn one so I have to take some avoiding action thankfully not lost any of my front wing and now we've got uh, one of the one of the Renault cars of Hulkenberg trying to overtake me re-overtake me as Perez sends it down the inside and Perez very very beautifully goes round the outside of Ricardo and Ricardo got major issues so I wonder if Ricardo was maybe one of the people caught up in that accident with the Mercedes and Ferrari car I don't know if he's got any front wing damage but he's going definitely slower than he should be the Red Bull car so we go round the outside side by side we overtake the Australian, obviously the home favourite here at this Grand Prix, and now he's down to P9, so I really don't know what on earth is going on there, we're going to have to take a look at a replay now, and confirm to you what went on, so it doesn't look like there's a Red Bull inside, it's Bottas chasing after Vettel looks like at this stage of the Grand Prix, it's Lewis Hamilton way out in the, well I would say the lead, but it looks like maybe Raikkonen's out in the lead, and then it's Hamilton second, Vettel and Bottas fight for third place, Vettel nearly squeezes Bottas into the wall, and then oh on the exit of the high speed chicane spun round and then for Vettel uh, we, we didn't see what actually went on there on that camera angle so let's take a look, another look here on board, oh look how close Vettel squeezes Bottas in and then here just going to be a very awkward 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 shake up and then Vettel straight into the wall very very unfortunate, loses his front left, Bottas is actually still in this race for now so he's a little bit lucky but obviously he's lost a lot of uh, momentum and time there and that was very unfortunate and now actually speaking of the man, he's now out of this race so he's retired actually after that, he, he did trundle around I think, uh, limping home to the pits but I think he ultimately retired into the pit so uh, wow Bottas and Vettel out of this Grand Prix two big guns in the season out in the first round that's big stuff that's big big stuff as we try and make a move now down the inside of Sergio Perez yellow flags though so there's another car that's had some sort of issue because we only got 17 runners now in this Grand Prix Hamilton you can see on the top left has already made his first pit stop from Ultras but I couldn't make the actual move on Perez there because of the uh, yellow flags but yeah two two big runners being out of this Grand Prix that would have definitely taken up at least one of the podium spots in fourth place that's big stuff because that now means me and Perez and the likes of Hulkenberg and you know what you know the Haas cars we can all maybe gain from this with those two out this Grand Prix so big big opportunity now in this race we need to try and take it so can we try and now get past Checo here in the Force India we're going to try and send it down the inside it's going to be a very tricky place it's going to turn to the outside for the next corner very unorthodox place to make a move and it doesn't happen but we switch back to the left hand side but Perez look at that he's really parking his car very very well now we've got Hamilton uh, for company, our fellow Brit hustling and harrying us right up our gearbox. Obviously, he's a mu in a much faster car and he wants to get uh, get through me. Obviously, it's, it is technically for track position, so I, he, I don't have to obey blue flags here. But at the moment, I'm just thinking I may as well let him go. So we do slow down a little bit. He's going to go round our outside and I'm just going to let him go because if he can overtake Perez then, he can maybe hold up Perez as he overtakes him and then I can use that to overtake him. So basically, a bit of a Wally or Fox move and we'll see if it actually works because it could backfire a little bit if Hamilton overtakes him cleanly with DRS on this straight but I'm counting on him maybe having to do a bit of fighting into turn one so here we go as we do go on to uh, what will be now lap number nine 
All right, only nine laps gone. There's been so much action. But Hamilton down the inside. He does slow Perez down. And so now, here we go. Through turn two, you can see we close right up to him. Carlos Sainz is now out of this Grand Prix. So I am the uh, only uh, Toro Rosso left in this race. Flying the flag solo as we go round the outside. So, so close. Nearly off circuit there as Perez really forces uh, into that corner. And now he's still round the outside. So we have to try and hang this round the outside of this full flat out right hander. So, so close. I'm pretty sure there was a tiny bit of contact there. Perez managed to keep it in a straight line. And we've made that move. And we've really hard earned that fourth place at the moment. Obviously, it's not actually going to be fourth place on the road at the end of this race. Because there's uh, some front runners who have already pit him. Obviously, we're going longer on super soft tyres. Whereas all of them were on ultra softs. And now yellow flags. And it's Kevin Magnussen that is. I think that is uh, in the Haas car on the left-hand side. Stricken. So, there are only 15 uh, runners left in this Grand Prix. So, you can really tell it's the first race of the season there. A lot of reliability issues including for our own team, uh, Toro Rosso, obviously Carlos Sainz you would have seen out earlier. So I'm the only one that uh, could potentially score some points this afternoon for our team. So let's hope I can continue what, doing a decent job I am doing at the moment, I think, in my opinion, on lap 12 here to be in P3, although Hulkenberg is now closing up on us. So will the Renault car be spoiling the party for us soon? Our tyres are starting to go off a little bit. 41% on the front left, and by the time we get to lap 14, I think it's time to come in. So Hulkenberg is going to continue on. Obviously, he's on the soft tyre, so he'll go a lot longer, and I think probably me and Hulkenberg will end up doing basically the, the opposite mirrored strategy. I think he'll obviously go on to super softs, and I'll go on to the soft tyres right now on uh, here on lap 14. So into the pits now, and hopefully a pretty decent stop, and uh, it's going to be releasing the clutch. It's a little bit of a slow stop, not going to lie, but obviously we are Toro, so we're no, uh, we're no Williams or Ferrari or Red Bull, who are known for their good uh, fast pit stops in the 2017 season but we uh, get the pit, pit, lim uh, pit limiter underway thankfully not like the preview career mode I did in the Renault car I actually found the pit lim uh, limiter button and so we're out in uh, what will be P11 behind Perez so you can see even though we did overtake him Perez has basically done the undercut to us. So that's a little frustrating, but obviously now we're on uh, fresher soft tyres than Perez because he came in a few laps earlier than us. So we should have the grip to hopefully try and close up on him. So as we go through later into the Grand Prix, two laps to be exact uh, when we cross the line on towards lap 17. We've got DRS open and we have indeed caught up to Perez quite rapidly indeed actually so those fresh tyres even though we have been overtaken by him as I said have come into play now so through turn one in turn two can we just get a good enough run to open DRS here and try and get enough overspeed it doesn't look like we're a bit too far back actually you can just see that Mercedes engine in the back of the Force India working well and into that corner we do kind of audaciously kind of break as late as we dare lock up on the right tyre and narrowly miss the gearbox and back end of Perez there so for now unable to make the move we're going to have to maybe just bait, uh, wait and be patient as we move now back onto the main pit straight on towards lap 18 now this time so much closer with DRS on the main pit straight can we make a move down the inside into turn one? Oh no we thought about it thought about it just didn't have enough overspeed so now through turn two second time's a charm come on open up the DRS and this time we've definitely got the speed now so we have to make the diving move down the inside it's going to turn to the outside for the next corner Perry's going to try his best to defend from me we're going to have to try and leave him the room but try and get ahead on the circuit a little bit with the traction we're going to have the inside for the next corner is he going to lop us off here. No, he's not. We're going to go over the curb a little bit. He's still there on the outside. Proximity arrow is still red. As we move on to the panning shot, you can see he still goes side by side. So it's a brilliant battle here with Sergio Perez. Surely, though, we're going to squeeze him out on the swooping right-hander. Yes, we are. And now Perez has to try and defend from that Renault car of, I think that's an Igor Hulkenberg or perhaps even Julian Palmer. Don't know. We won't count him out. He's done a decent job so far to kind of uh, try and match Nico. But I think from that red helmet there, flashing past, I think it definitely is Nico Hulkenberg. Yes, it is. As you see on the top left, Hulkenberg has actually overtaken Perez and so the Renault car performing very well against the the, uh, the Force India actually at the moment and now as we uh, cross the line you can see we're up into P5 as some of the front runners are making a second pit stop now so as I mentioned I didn't think we were going to make the two stop but definitely the, the the kind of top guys the Ferraris your Red Bulls your yeah, Mercedes even the Williams car doing the two stop but now as we move on to lap 22 into the high speed chicane not got the best line through here going very slowly on the exit and that will allow Nika Hulkenberg to come out of nowhere shooting up my inside like an absolute rocket ship the yellow rocket ship to be exact down the inside we tried to hang around the outside but it's no use he's got the better line we have a bit of oversteer and he's overtaken us fair and square so Hulkenberg really did surprise me came out of nowhere didn't get the best line in sixth gear uh, on the exit got on the curbing that slowed me down and so Hulkenberg's got me so I have to try and maybe re-overtake him we've got DRS but through the final corner calamities oh narrowly narrowly just kept it out of the wall but now we've got look at this Max Verstappen now on a set of ultra soft tyres coming through so after losing the back end 
saving it. We've now got our um, uh, senior team trying to overtake us. We're going to have to uh, hamper him a little bit, but I don't think um, uh, Helmut Marco is going to like if we hamper him too much here. And he's uh, he's going to hustle and harry me. He's right up my, uh, my, my, my gearbox. We're going to have to defend to the inside. We did have DRS, actually, of Hulkenberg. You can see there we do actually squeeze him quite violently into that into that corner. So I'm sure Verstappen's not going to be happy about that on the team radio. And pretty much at this point, I think, actually, you know what? There's no point in holding him up because he's in a bloody Red Bull car. He's going to overtake me. So I kind of just on this sweeping right hand to lift off a tad and try and just make life easy for, for him. So he's going to overtake me. Now, once again, I'm hoping, just like with Hamilton and Perez, I'm hoping Verstappen can basically go and overtake Hulkenberg hold him up as he do, does it, and I can try and hold on to the back of Verstappen and try and re-overtake uh, Hulkenberg. Because you've got you to gotta say, in the grand scheme of things, you would think the Red Bull car would overtake me and Hulkenberg. So the best I can do is try and use Verstappen to re-overtake Hulkenberg. But as we move on to lap 24, my pace is actually just very, very bad on the soft tyres. I actually just don't have the pace to keep up to Verstappen. And now I've got Felipe Massa for company. You can see in the mirrors there, the proximity area. He's on the left. We're going to just park it in the middle, but it looks like he's going to force his way to the outside of the circuit. So he's going to go around the outside. We're going to break early. Switch back move, and that is absolutely textbook. That is absolutely lovely. That was so, so satisfying to do to Massa because it really did seem like he was going to have me completely go into that chicane. And so just thought to break a little bit early, nip down, get the better line, get the kind of acceleration going a little bit earlier. So we do, for now, keep sixth place. But I feel like it's only inevitable that he's going to overtake us because it looks like he has so much more speed. And for now, at the beginning of the season, the Williams car is uh, a much faster car than the Toro Rosso, unfortunately. And so here he goes on the left-hand side. We're going to have to try and defend to the inside. He's there already. You can see his front, uh, his, uh, front right wing and his uh, front right tyre and he's still there side by side bang tyres a little bit there he's pushing me off a little bit to the right hand side we go side by side through the flat out left, uh, right hander not kind of flat uh, when he goes side by side though we have to lift off a little bit to give him the room obviously because he's well and truly got his, uh, his uh, front nose alongside me so I can't just squeeze him out there and go full uh, throttle and so now as we move on to lap 26 he's going to have DRS though now and he's got so much more overspeed we try and break a little bit early and maybe get a better line but he actually parks it into the apex to be fair to him and Mass has done a great work because he's got a second part of the cherry of DRS. So that's pretty much that done. I mean, I tried to maybe look to the inside, but he's just having none of it. Chops me off of the apex and he's got it. They, he, that's, just, that's just the AI this year. They, they're not having any of it. You can't kind of bully, bully them off circuit. And so Mass has got me. You can see this, oh, the speed he's got now and the downforce and grip he's got because it's only a few corners and he's already well and truly ahead of me. So now we move on to lap 29. And by the time we get to that, Massa and Verstappen, I think, overtook Hulkenberg. So it's going to be P7 on the road. I mean, I can't be too disheartened, actually. That's a very good position for the Torosso car, I feel, especially with our teammate out of this Grand Prix. Great effort there from Ferrari to take the victory today. Tell me, Ant, what was the key to this success? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. So, here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands, and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari, on the top step once more. So I think all in all, a pretty successful first race, actually. Very, very entertaining for sure, as, a, as a, just a, from an entertainment perspective. That was a really fun race, but results-wise as well, I feel like where the Toro Rosso car is, according to the game at the moment, the performance chart, we're about just ahead of McLaren and Sauber and kind of battling Haas. So to be able to beat one of the Renault cars, uh, both of the Force Indy cars today, I think that's pretty damn sweet. You can see on the reputation there, a lot of teams impressed by us, especially you can see Haas definitely impressed by us, um, and also Force India. So... Yeah, all round, very decent job. And obviously now we move into what you've seen from the preview uh, video, maybe. We've now got this rich guy asking us to maybe try one of his classic cars out. Now in the preview one, I chose the overtake or pursuit challenge, basically. And now this time we're going to choose the other one. Or we, ch we chose the overtake challenge, we're now going to choose the pursuit one, which is going to be at the Japanese Grand Prix, the Japanese short circuit to be exact. And we're going to be in Fernando Alonso's 2006 Renault car to finish out episode one of Career Mode. Obviously these events are now part of career 
shimmer. So we go to five red lights and we're underway. Now how this has worked is obviously there's been, there's, there's been staggered starts. So we're P5 now, but all the cars ahead of us are in slower cars, but they've got an advantage of they started a few seconds ahead of me now. So I've only got three laps here at the short Suzuka circuit to try and overtake all of them to get back into P1. And I must say, this Renault car around Japan, very, very nice. You can see I did lock up into turn one there previously, but getting back into the swing of it, it's uh, it's a very nice car. This this circuit as well, obviously I've mentioned it, they've reprofiled Suzuka, and it's so much more flowing now. I mean, sector one, I said it in the video in the 50% race, uh, you know, like a, like a week or so ago, it is, there's no other word for it, orgasmic. It is a absolutely awesome first sector now with the undulation. And in this car, this car is all about momentum. It's not got the absolute downforce, but it's definitely got the revs for it. And it's got the momentum swing, especially around this circuit. It's all about just letting the car roll through the corners, basically, and just keeping it in like a higher gear and basically just letting the car do the work, really. So now you can see we go around the Williams car up into P4. Now, remember, we've only got three laps here, so I'm going to cut this very, very fine. But I think we should be able to do it because we're in such a much faster car than all these guys because they're going to be in, I think, older generation cars, effectively, really. So now we close through on towards the last lap. So we've only got one lap to basically make three overtakes here. We've got P3, P2, and then P1 a little bit further up ahead. So let's try and do this and try and kick things off very successfully for our classic invitational events. We go down the inside of third place. Can we try and now feed it through around the outside of P2 on the next left hand? It's going to be close. No, he brake checks us. Thankfully, our front wing doesn't come off there, but he's definitely uh, done, done us a little bit dirty there. So we go around the outside eventually. And now we've only got a couple of corners, literally only three to overtake P1. It's going to be so, so close. Here we go. Momentum swing round the outside into the last corner. That's how you want to do it. Last minute overtake to get P1. And that's going to be a very nice way to kick off our invitational events as part of the career mode uh, experience there. So awesome stuff. So great first entertaining Australian Grand Prix race and uh, successful invitational. So guys, that's going to be the end of episode one. So if you did enjoy it, smash the like button, guys. It'd be absolutely awesome if we can try and aim for something crazy like 4,000 likes on this first episode, guys. So, and to add some more incentive, guys, part two is going to come out later today. So smash the like button for having a double upload today of career mode. Part two of the Chinese Grand Prix will be out later today. So smash the like button for that. Let me know what you thought about anything in the comments below. If you are new around here, then be sure to get subscribed for more F1 2017 content and other racing games. I've been Ariva. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time.